Welcome to Avian's official systems engineering podcast. Today we have a little bit of a different topic, uh, aircraft lifecycle support. And um, this one's actually pretty interesting because Chris, who is on, and I'll let you introduce yourself in a second here, has developed a very specific piece of software for one of our customers. Um, today we're going to give you a little bit of an overview of what that is without spilling too many of our secrets um, and how that has helped uh, our customers along the way and maybe how it could help you in the future. So Chris, do you want to give first a little introduction and in, also, sorry, Jeff, Jeff is also on the line with us today um, to uh, answer any questions that may pop up or even help the conversation flow a little bit because I obviously am not the expert in this. Um, so Chris, do you wanna give a little bit of background about yourself and then we'll jump into what the actual product is. Sure, thanks Ian. Uh, and thanks for having us here today. Um, my name is Chris Vincent. I'm uh, an engineer here employed with Avian. Um, I have 20 years experience in DOD contracting, uh, bachelor's and master's in mechanical engineering. Um, the software I've developed is called the uh, Fleet Management Model, Model Plus Simulated Depot, Sim Depot for short. Um, it's utilized to simulate and model and simulate the, uh, the life cycle of uh, aircraft fleets. Um, with it, we are supporting another a um, uh, couple customers, Navy customers here, and we use it to help them make decisions, smart decisions, in the management of their aircraft fleets and maintenance. So this sounds, in Jeff or Chris, please always uh, uh, correct me if I'm saying something wrong, but this sounds like it fits with MBSC perfectly. Um, and there's a little bit of merriment there between the simulations of what, Chris, what you've created and how MBSC works. Um, and maybe that's a little abstract, so let's potentially just stick to this topic. But um, you had mentioned there is um, a little bit of a backstory with this and how it came to be. So do you want to hit on that a little bit? Sure, sure. I came to work here at Avian uh, in 2013. Um, and m one of my first jobs was to uh, take this uh, Excel data file, macro enabled Excel workbook and uh, make it work. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so I guess the pedigree uh, stems from PMA 273. Uh, and um, some work that some of the active duty folks were, were doing over there in the um, late 2000s uh, and early 20, 2010 time frame, um, where they were trying to figure out when they needed to buy a re uh, an aircraft fleet to replace the T-45. Um, and so there was m mainly um, formula-based um, deterministic type formulas and calculations in the workbook um, and they were roughly trying to approximate and determine when that fleet would uh, be out of life, so to speak. Um, and we could talk more about what that means. But um, so I, I got a hold of it and um, implemented um, computer engineering, computer software, uh, best practices, and made it into um, a simulation. Um, and and since then, uh, the program office, uh, PMA 275, has been very ha happy uh, with some of the work that we're delivering for them. Uh, and also uh, PMA 275 is, is another customer we've picked up um, specifically for the depot model, yeah. the depot maintenance model. That they're leveraging that currently to optimize retrofit of uh, MV and CV aircraft. Right. So it sounds like, and I do... So when, Chris, you say you came on board with an Excel spreadsheet and kind of just were told we need this, um, our CEO of Avian, we don't talk about the company overall too much. We, we really talk about the capabilities of MBSC um, and SE. Um, but our company overall has this motto of get shit done. And Kevin, our CEO, says it all the time. So I imagine that that was one of those points where it's like, here, here's this spreadsheet. Make something happen out of it. Uh, Pretty much, yeah. Um, yeah I, I had um, pretty much free reign to develop it the way I thought it needed to be developed, yeah. and um, the end result has been has been very useful. I would say, um, both at, on the acquisition side and the operational side, the, the folks that fly the aircraft, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in contact with folks there every week, um, you know, and they're suggesting, what if we do this? What if we do that? And right. I can show what the impacts and consequences are of some of those decisions. Yeah. 
So it's it's taking that Expel spreadsheet, um, over delivering basically, and creating what you this piece of software that, like you said, can simulate and almost predict the future uh, on on some levels. Um, Jeff, did you want to jump in with any questions? Yeah, well, it's it's solving a problem, right? And so <clears throat> the the capability gap was that the program offices, in this case, the T45 program office, didn't have a, a, a good enough scheduling tool to understand the impacts of modifications to a particular aircraft. Or um, in, in the case of maybe the T45 more, the, the SLEP program and stuff. So upgrading the aircraft to keep it around for a number of years requires that you take it offline so it's not going to be used and you have to put it in a hangar somewhere or through a modification line and it's got to get worked on for a certain amount of time <clears throat> and that time could be anywhere from two weeks to a year <laughs> yeah. depending on what you're going to do to it so um, it gets complicated when you try and figure out what the most efficient way to do that is. Uh, so um, when you take aircraft off the line, that means they're not readily available. That means you can't fly them. You can't train new student naval aviators, aviators, which means you can't get new student naval or it's new aviators out to the fleet to replace the ones that are retiring or going on to other things. Um, so it's a it's a cycle there. And so what? Chris has done is he has simplified that and provided something, a capability to the program office and really to the fleet in order to do that, to, to look at it from an, uh, the most efficient way of rolling aircraft through and, 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 and going through those modifications. So um, that's the, that's the beauty of his program. He solved a, uh, a need and simplified it for the customer. Yeah, definitely. And um, a little bit of a side note here, but I was getting my hair cut this weekend and a retired admiral happened to walk in um, who was then chatting with another customer at the barbershop. And um, the conversation went somewhere along the lines of our customers want us to be able to basically change the wheel of a car as the car is moving down the road. So it's the same concept, I think, um, where we, we're trying to figure out a way to make these updates to the fleet, to the, to the aircraft, and um, do it while not losing a ton of time, a ton, a ton of money, uh, and, and being as efficient as possible. Well, so you've got a lot of things pulling on, on that modification schedule, right? Mm -hmm. You've got funding. How many of these modification kits uh, can, can you buy at one time? How many people or how many aircraft can you pull off the line to go through that modification without impacting the fleet? Um, how long does it take to modify comes into question. Uh, you've got the fleet screaming for more aircraft and for their modifications to be quicker because they want that capability. And then you've got the acquisition side saying, well, wait a second. I don't have this much money, and uh, the company that's making this modification, this increase in capability, can't make it fast enough. Okay, and so there's all kinds of push and pull here, and Chris's uh, software takes into account all those variables and puts them together to make sense. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, and gives so you it's a, results. It's a very too, right? complicated program. A very complicated problem, but it's something that every every program office in a sustainment phase really would would have to deal with. I would think, right? Some sort of capacity. Yeah, the 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 issue um, is created with each of the IPTs in the aircraft program. Each IPT is buying stuff, and they don't necessarily know how long it's going to take to do the mod, and they they don't usually have awareness of other mods that other IPTs are procuring and trying to put on the aircraft. So they'll come up with, um, well, how many, how many kits should we buy 
you know, in next year or in the year after that. And typically it's maybe we'll buy 12. Let's buy 12. Why so 12? it's kind of like a guessing game at that, that point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So what we've done, especially with the depot models, we've created a depot maintenance model so we can see, okay, well, we're going to have 12 aircraft in for this mod. And then this other IPT wants 48 aircraft per year in for another mod. And then what you end up having is a lot of redundant work and aircraft stacked on top of, you know, a stack up of, of redundant work. And so we figured out how to uh, consolidate a lot of those efforts, cons at least consolidate the redundant parts, like right. take an airplane apart and put it back together, the operational checks, those types of things. So, so we've, we've been able to isolate just the retrofit part and um, account for that in the simulation in conjunction with the, the work that's being, the work that's redundant across mods. And it also allows for, for each of the IPTs to see uh, you're not going to get 12 aircraft that year because right. avionics needs 48 mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, so we were able to, to simulate and model each of those retrofit mods uh, individually and show that it's, you know, there's a problem. We can't do the work in individually. Now we need to consolidate the, the retrofit work in an integrated mod fashion, integrated mod plan fashion. Right. And it sounds like even when you have like that problem where one wants 12, but one wants 48, you have now the the data to back that and, and say, we can't do that. Here's the reason why we can't do that, um, which is obviously super important to a lot of our yeah, customers. Exactly. We're, we're doing that right now to we're supporting um, modding a lot of contracts um, because the program did not follow the program did not have a model, a depot model, and they did not have a integrated retrofit plan and they guesstimated how many kits they could buy and procure and, and install and so now we're going through and, and updating all those contracts to do what's realistic and what right. can be projected to occur in the next four to five seven years yeah yeah um so i think we talked a lot about how it helps a pma do is there any other points you want to make on that topic well um it's really once once we have a model of uh, maintenance, and that's what we have. We we basically model depot maintenance because it's unique and it takes longest. Um, scheduled maintenance we can we account for as well in the simulation, um, but that's not so much the issue. That planning factors can can handle that, but the uh, periodic maintenance inspections, um, things that take a while, all the things that I'd, I'd say anything over two weeks, um, where an aircraft will be down for at least two weeks, we're, we're modeling. Um, and once we have that model, and we also, in the case of T-45, we have a model of utilization. Uh, we simulate utilization of the aircraft hour by hour, flight hour by flight hour, and also fatigue. We, we simulate um, f consumption of the, the, the aircraft with respect to fatigue because right. they can't fly forever. Um, so we, we're modeling also, we're modeling consumption, we're modeling uh, utilization of the fleet in conjunction with depot operations in order to come up with that life cycle plan for the fleet. Um, we're able to determine uh, with high degree of accuracy uh, when aircraft will need mods, um, when they can be expected to retire, how long the fleet will last, um, those types of things. And with that capability, it not only supports the existing fleet, it, it not only helps optimize management of your existing fleet of aircraft, but it, it could be used to simulate hypothetical new fleets, right. like replacement fleets. For instance, I'm, I'm working a study right now to, to help flesh out some of the key performance parameters, key contract, key contract attributes of uh, a replacement fleet, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, how many aircraft per year? When, when do we need IOC, those types of things. So um, modeling a sim, um, you know, I've been doing it for over 20 years professionally, also in graduate school. Um, it's really necessary. You need a model of things in order to be able to project um, what will be needed in the future and how, what things need to look like. Right, right. Um, and then... We've talked about it the entire time, but obviously the, the biggest point here is efficiency. Um, I imagine with that is cost savings and just having all of that data. It sounds like there's a ton of data that's coming out of all of these models and simulations, but 
data is really what drives decisions. Um, so it, it's super important. Uh, any other points that you want to make? Um, we talked about what we talked about what it is. We talked about what it can do. Um, Jeff, anything else you, you can think of that you want to talk about? I think you're on mute, maybe. Yeah, Jeff, it looks like you're on mute. No, I was just saying that uh, Chris has a has a unique capability that uh, that I believe has applicability across a lot of different areas. Um, the uh, the attention to detail that he's got in his software and the and the capability to to handle a lot of different variables, a lot of different perturbations, and things is uh, really really neat capability. Yeah, definitely. And if um, you're listening to this podcast and want to learn more about how um, Avian can support the efforts that you have and how potentially Chris can help support those efforts, definitely reach out and we will get you connected to the right people, um, including Chris, Jeff, and potentially some other folks within the company. Is there any last minute, oh, by the ways, with this topic that we want to talk about? Just want to say thanks, Ian. Thanks, yeah. Jeff. This was really fun and uh, happy to help uh, any prospective customers. Yeah, absolutely. Jeff, any, any oh, by the way? No, thanks to Chris for his uh, all his capability and coming to work for Avium. It's yeah, good, sounds like uh, it's a good great. place to work. <laughs> sounds like you're doing a lot, which is really cool. And uh, it's cool that you're doing something different than a lot of folks here as well. So awesome to hear and awesome to learn a little bit more about your work. Um, thank you, Jeff and Chris. And uh, on the next episode, actually, you know what? This is the last episode of the first run of this podcast. So we're, we're ending it here. Um, before this, we, we talked about system engineering, model-based system engineering. We talked about digital engineering. Um, if you missed any of those episodes, feel free to jump back and watch uh, all those or listen to those on the podcasting platform of your choice. So again, Chris, Jeff, thank you. And I'll see everybody next time. The Model Vision Podcast is brought to you by Avian. At Avian, we provide extraordinary support in the areas of model-based systems engineering. We help our customers detect problems early using modeling with a purpose. With Avian's MBSE network, we provide a collaborative ecosystem to access, define, and implement a tailored MBSE approach for program success. Avian's model-based systems engineers work with Sysmill using Cameo software to replace the document-centric nature of typical systems engineering. Our engineers expose vulnerabilities within your system before implementation, ensure speed to the fleet with a solution that brings clarity early, enhances the chief engineer's capabilities, creates a holistic view, allowing for better decision making and simplifies complexity. Everything works together to bring certainty to your design. If you're interested in learning more about Avian's capabilities within MBSC, you can visit avian.com capabilities.